Hi all, welcome to the video lecture series of Object Oriented Programming. In this video lecture, we'll be discussing about activity diagrams and state chart diagrams. Both of these diagrams, activity diagram and state chart diagram, both of them belong to unified modeling language. So we have seen use case diagrams, class diagrams and interaction diagrams so far and in this video lecture we will be covering two more diagrams they are activity diagram and state chart diagram. So first of all we will see what is an activity diagram. So this diagram is used to represent various activities. So first of all we have to define what an activity is. So how can we define an activity? An activity can be defined as a state with an internal action and one or more outgoing transitions. So an activity will contain one action and based on, based on, based on that action there will be one or more outgoing transitions. And this outgoing transitions will follow automatically once this internal action is over. And if one activity has more than one outgoing transitions, it's like input and output. Okay, if the action has got more than one outputs, then we must uh, we must mention the exact situation under which the corresponding output will be received. It is possible to represent parallel activities. Parallel activities means those activities that takes place at the same time, like multiprocessing. For example, when we use our laptops or computers, we will be performing different different activities at the same time. Those are known as parallel activities. So if you want to represent parallel activities, we will be using swim lanes that we will see in the example what do we mean by swim lanes. So most of you might have understood what does that mean when we watch swimming uh, race or swimming uh, competitions and all. For each participant there will be a track or there will be a lane that is known as swim lanes. Okay, So to represent parallel activities we use swim lanes. And when to use this activity diagram? When shall we use activity diagram to model something? We have to use activity diagrams in case if our process is a, is a complex one and it involves so many components. This is an example for activity diagram for student admission procedure at IITs. Okay. So this is known as swim lanes as you can see this vertical track like thing. So this is swim lane 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So you can see this hostel, office and hospital they are both working parallel so we can represent the parallel activities like this. So this entire picture represents how a student admission takes place in IIT. Okay. So this is the activity diagram example. Now we will see a state chart diagram. This diagram is useful uh, it's better you study it properly because these diagrams are used to, to represent something known as uh, state transitions in a subject named theory of computations that you'll be studying in the upcoming semesters. Okay, it this kind of diagrams or state di diagrams are used to model how the state of an object changes. An object will be having multiple states. How the object changes their states at different lifetime, I mean at uh, different uh, portions of its lifetime. Okay, so it is used to describe the behavioral change of an object, okay, based on different different actions. Okay, that is suppose one action took place, how does the behavior of object will change when that action takes place or when one particular condition is arrived how does the object is going to change the, its behavior all those things are modeled by using this state chart diagram and when we draw state chart diagram we have to make use of these things the initial state 
final state, then transitions. All the states in between the initial state and final state are known as simply states. So initial state means the state from which our state chart diagram begins. So we have to highlight that state. To represent initial state, we have to use a filled circle. Okay. And final state means the terminating state. That is the end of our state chart diagram. So how to represent the final state? To represent final state, what we'll do is, we will draw a larger circle, inside which we'll be drawing a filled circle. That is how we represent a final state. Okay, and how do you represent a normal state? That is all those states which are not initial and final. How do you represent the states in between the initial state and final state? To represent states, we have to use rectangles with rounded corners. You have to keep in mind, it's not sharp end corners, it has to be rounded corners. And how the transition we have to represent? Transition means how the object changes its states. So a state chart diagram will be containing so many states. The object will change from one state to the other state. So that is known as a transition. How to represent that? For that we have to use arrow lines between the two states and we have to write the event along that line. That is upon which event this transition will take place that we have to label along the line. We will see one example. So as you can see this is an example for a state chart diagram for an order object. That is we are placing an order. How that a placement of an order can be represented by using a state chart diagram. You can see this is the initial state filled circle. This is the final state filled circle inside a larger circle and these are transitions this line arrows and as you can see how so this unknown unprocessed order becomes a rejected order when this option or this event occurs similarly an unprocessed order becomes an accepted order so this state unprocessed order becomes or changes to accepted order when this event takes place so we have to represent the even name along with the transition lines. Then only we can identify when all these state changes takes place. And these are the states and see how we are representing it by using rectangles with rounded corners, not sharp ended corners. Okay, so this is an example for state chart diagram. So we shall conclude this video lecture. In this video lecture, we have discussed about activity diagrams and state chart diagrams. These two diagrams are also belonging to the unified modeling language. And we also discussed when to use an activity diagram and when to use this state chart diagrams. And we also saw an example of each of these diagrams. I hope all of you have understood. Thank you so much.